everyone, Tarantulas with Shanti. Uh, you already know that because here you are and it's been a long time, hasn't it? Um, and I've had a lot of things I've been working on in my personal life and just uh, keeping up with some of my tarantula stuff, deciding what uh, route I'm going to take and I have quite a few new additions. I have had quite a few exciting things happen and a lot of little changes. And I'm going to uh, share those with you. Um, also, uh, I have an idea for my next educational video. And I'm working on that too. And one of the first things I'm going to do is share a Halloween feeding. Because, you know, Halloween always gets me in the mood for, you know, something fun. Um, and I have this big herb haven. And I'm going to put my Kilobrachis fimbriatus in here. Um, I should be able to do a rehouse video. Um, and I'm also planning to rehouse my Pelinobius muticus, my king baboon. She has been in her enclosure for over a year. And, you know, it's very dried out, the substrate, and it's just kind of settled a bit. And I just want to give her some fresh substrate. Uh, she's not going to be happy about it. Uh, so it'll probably be a little bit exciting. We don't get to see the king baboons very much uh, since they're fossorial. And I hope to get some good footage of her. And perhaps we can catch her stridulating and uh, doing her thing. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, she's gotten pretty big. She's molted a couple times and I haven't really measured her since then. So it'll be a good chance to check on her health and measure her. I also have a terrarium I'm going to build. It's a 10 gallon. I'm going to make a background for it with, uh, you know, our trusty great stuff and our aquarium safe sealant. And so that's going to happen. And then <laughs> I ordered some tongs. <laughs> These tongs are crazy. They're 24 inch. I got them on Amazon for $19.99 with free shipping. The thing that surprised me the most about them when they came in the mail, well, they really look like they're more than 24 inches, um, but they're not. They're just very thick. Um, I did not expect them to be as thick as they are. So yeah, you can see that's pretty, they're pretty big. Uh, <laughs> that's on my head. These tongs are huge and they are made for reptiles, you can see. so. And I have a few new critters since I've last spoken with you, and I'll go over that. I want to do a collection tour. I don't think that I've really done one, so I don't think a lot of people out there know which tarantulas I have, which ones I've had experience with. So that will be pretty exciting to share that. I've added two more shelves to my tarantula room. I have some, uh, my anoles have had some babies. I can let you know how my little tree frogs are doing. I have a new lizard um, that was found when I was hiking. It's like a little wild caught, very common lizard that we have in this area. A lot of things that, that I, can, I can go over and share what's been happening. So let me just uh, add maybe a feeding or two to this video so that it won't just be me talking. And uh, I will see you next time. This is a shout out to Shady Things. Mmm, brain freeze. Onapelma moderatum. Quick. This is a little female, very slow growing species. 
she's gonna be beautiful so for all of my tarantulas I have um, a page in a book where I keep track of where they came from um, whether I've confirmed them as female and uh, what date that was I draw a picture of the spermathica and then I uh, keep track of molts so my Ophonopelma moderatum started out as one fourth inch it was very small I got it over a year ago and these are all the feedings um, when they're slings I feed them a little more frequently and when they get older I start feeding them a little less isn't this the cutest little enclosure it's a matchbox car case has a carabina versicolor in it you can see this little one has molted and it built more extensive webbing since the molt because it used to just have a tube over here this one belongs to my friend Jonathan I'm tarantula sitting for him so let's try and feed this little one okay I've got my roach Uh-oh. Well, it did molt a little while ago. So it should be hungry. Let me retrieve the roach and try again. I think I just scared him or her because sometimes that happens. There we go. Feed that cutie. back into the little web tunnel she goes the thing i'm going to do while i have this versicolor open this closure open enclosure open the other thing i'm going to do is give it a little spray very small spray and there you have it here i have a little brachypelma vagans this one also belongs to my friend it's part of my Tarantula sitting. All right. This is a Formictopus species green femur sling. These are very pretty little tarantulas. They they're, they look blue when they're babies. Kind of feisty, too. So this little sling is not something you see very often. Um, and you can maybe see its little bum in there. Right there. It's probably in... I can't tell if it's in pre molt or not. Um, I just put a roach in there, so that'll probably, it looks like it's showing some interest. Now, this species is interesting. Um, I would not be surprised if this isn't a tarantula that might be related to a Brachypelma classy. I see some similar physical characteristics but I mean I know that could mean nothing but there's an interesting thing with their legs and I don't think you can see it from there but they have these knobby nodules like these little nodules on their joints I've noticed a few Aphonopelma species have those as well and uh, Rocky Pelma Classy has that I know they're going to do some extensive revision on some of the Aphonopelmas, so it'll be really interesting to see how all that plays out. Genus and species that you don't see too often, like in the United States. This one is the Kotztetlanda, species Guanajuato. And I'm going to give this little one a pre-kill 
brooch because it just molted a couple days ago so it's still delicate and anyway it's tiny so I'm not going to give it something that's too big for it to eat. Maybe we can get a shot up above so you can see it in the light. Yeah, still pretty fresh. I might take that out. But anyway, you get to see it. So pretty cute little sling. And uh, it was a lot smaller before it molted. One of those delicate, tiny ones that I'm always nervous when I keep them. And you can see the molt in there underneath the leaf next to the roach. Here I have a beautiful adult female Gramostola porteri. This is a rose hair. She's been a pretty good eater so far. Maybe the roach will move for us. Na 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 da 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 I suppose a lot of you have heard about poor Alex Trebek, who is uh, suffering from pancreatic cancer, which is not a good cancer to have. The survival rate is very low. So, uh, my heart goes out to him. Grew up watching Jeopardy. Alright, so looks like she's kind of backed off of this roach who decided to play dead. Here I go. Get it, girl. Come on. Oh. Okay. She's... <laughs> Are you feisty? Someone's feisty. And, uh, oh, yep, it moved. Here's my little Rocky Palma Classy. This is actually uh, my second one, raised from a little sling. And you can see they're kind of skittish. Well, there went the food. So hopefully it'll hunt it down. This cutie is a Rocky Palma Kallenbergi. And this one was a freebie from Palp Friction when I ordered my um, Rocky Palma Albiceps female from them a few months ago. This one has molted a couple times and seems to be growing rather quickly for a brachypalma. And has an appetite. Here we have a C. Lietze female. She was paired back on the 9th of August, and it does take them a few months of gestation period before they lay a sack. Last time I saw her, she did look a little plump, so I'm very hopeful. I have another one that was paired uh, a little bit later, and she's not plump yet, but they've both stopped eating, which is, that can be a sign that she uh, has a sac developing. And another thing about this species, they take a long time when they pair. They can be together for three hours, and these, in fact, were. My little male... Um, paired with this one and one other that were given to me by someone to pair them. And uh, they're also, another thing about them is they, they like to be kept dry when they're gestating and creating a sac. So just some interesting facts about pairing Syria Cosmos Leetzi. There's a very quick little C. Darlingi sling that recently molted. This one also belongs to my friend Jonathan. It's made a nice web in there. So it's eating a pre-killed Dubia nymph.
This is my Crypsidromus species Black Amelia. And you don't see these too often in collections. She's very pretty. She molted recently. You can see she has a very black abdomen with some orange rusty setae. Let's see if she's hungry. Okay. And she's just continued to um, have a darker abdomen and a redder carapace as she's matured. And she is a mature female now. Very pretty little dwarf species. Well, I knew this was coming. This is my little Platycryptus californicus, the tan jumping spider. She's been with me for almost a couple years now. I actually found her near Death Valley, California. She was so tiny and I brought her home. She's had a good life. She's had her little rock and she sat on and she's eaten well. And then she started displaying the characteristics I've seen in my other jumping spider and in my wolf spider where she just looked a bit listless, but she took prey and she ate it like she was very hungry. And then after that, it was like, that's the last meal. And then she just wasn't interested and she just started to look smaller and I knew it was coming. I wondered how long she would live. Um, she made it quite a while because uh, I think we had gone down there in 2000. 18 yeah so she made it to almost 2020 it's pretty amazing for a little one goodbye sweet girl she definitely had the cutest little face with little wipers or mustache they were constantly going